Alright, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Papa News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Papa. Grandma watch Papa's every morning and every night. Greetings. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. So today's video is brought to you courtesy of Infinity Dream Liquor Palace. They are located at shop number one at Imperial Plaza. 93 Great George Street in Savannah Lamar and at the Rainbow Plaza in Hopewell in the parish of Anova. At Infinity Dream Liquor Palace, they don't deal with knockoffs. You will get liquors from Infinity Dream that you will not get anywhere else in Western Jamaica. Trust me when I tell you that. They have white Hennessy. They have all the Crown Royals that you can think of and a lot more. Just call them at 876-724-8228. That's 876-724-8228. They also do consignment. So if you are keeping a party and you want liquor and consignment, all you need is a bill, your ID, and a reference letter. And then you check with Infinity Dream. Ensure that you check with them for all your good stuffs. Now, as promised, today, our in-house lawyer is Mr. Lambert Johnson. If you have any question that you would want Mr. Johnson to answer, just send us a WhatsApp message. 876-343-1034. That's 876-343-1034. Or if you want to speak with Mr. Johnson directly, or if you want to set up an appointment to speak to him, keep watching. His numbers will be posted. Remember to like and share the video from now. So, let's ask the lawyer. Yeah, ma morning, Sir Johnson. Morning, sir. Uh, morning, <laughs> Papa and Sir many, many viewers and subscribers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Respect, man. Respect. All right. So, today we are going to cover a topic. What's the topic for today, Sir Johnson? I'll be dealing with... A document referred to as power of attorney. Very useful document. Okay. But before we go there, um, I understand you, you, there's something about expungement I need you to, to clear up for me. Go ahead. Well, I have received a number of calls from persons who indicated they want to go and have the expungement procedure done. Yes. But when I asked this question, what was the outcome of the case? They say they were found not guilty. Okay. So the reality is, if you have been found not guilty, Whatever records were taken in terms of fingerprint should have been destroyed, and so there should be no need for expungement. So the operative word uh, there, the operative word is should, right? Yes. Because if the police, what I understand is, if the police don't send in that, the, the matter was uh, hold, hold that go. So, so, so what the person can do in those circumstances, yes, is to go to the court office and have them. Give them a letter so they can take to the criminal records office. So the records there yes. rectified. Any reference to it is removed completely. Okay. So once there is no conviction, there is no criminal record. If you were found not guilty. Uh -oh. Once there is no conviction, there is no criminal record. Okay. To be destroyed. Okay. Because as I've said before, once you are charged, depending on the offense, yes. once you go to court, one of the first orders that judge will make Yes. That a fingerprint order be made. to be made. All right. Thanks for that, sir. Um, someone said um, someone is going through a divorce, but the divorce is not yet finalized. So the person wants to purchase a property. Can the wife make a claim on that property that the person is, is about to purchase? Well, it depends in that the only property that supposes are entitled to claim half is what is referred to as the matrimonial home. Okay. Anything outside of that, you have to be able to show what contribution okay. to, to the acquisition or the purchase. So, it is typical while persons are married, each person will buy their car. Yes. Um, in those circumstances, you can't say because you bought a car while I was married, I'm entitled to half. Because you'll be able to show that you went to the credit union, mm -hmm. and I'm, I, I'm a strong believer in credit union. Yes. And you went to the credit union, and... You got a loan, yes. and they can see the salary deduction coming from your pay, mm -hmm. and that you paid for this car. So the same would apply with a property. Yes. If you were to go and buy a house because you have investments, or you got a gift of money from a family member, yes, and you could show clearly that the spouse had no contribution, 
Yes. Then they they could not claim. Okay. Especially if it is acquired while they are in the midst of a divorce or after a divorce. Okay. All right. The next one. Can somebody have two wills? For ex for example, somebody, the person living abroad, but the person have a will, have assets and stuffs in Jamaica. They make a will in Jamaica, and they have assets overseas. They also make a will for for the overseas property, benefiting the same set of persons. How how how, how is that looked at? All right. So the law is while you can make separate wills. Yes. For both countries, you really don't have to. One will can suffice. Okay. And what would happen is that on your death, the will would be probated in the country in which you died. Oh, okay. And for the aspects of outside of Jamaica, like in another Commonwealth country, yes. you would then be able to take that probated will to that other country and have what you are process called resealing. Okay. And so the will would have effect in that in other the, country. In that country, oh. It is not quite necessary to have two wills, although there is nothing really wrong with it. Oh. But but but, but I must qualify. I, I must qualify. Yes. When you are doing that, you make sure you say the will. This will is to treat with all my properties mm -hmm. in Jamaica. Okay. Because the reality is, the will with the last date mm -hmm. is the will that the court will recognize. So, uh, if someone was to make two wills, yes. I would want them to make a special note yes. that both wills have the same date. So, okay. not to take precedence. And then they would put a specific clause mm -hmm. that this will does not deal with my properties in Jamaica or Canada uh, or wherever. Uh, okay. All right. All right. Yeah, man. Thanks a lot for that. All right. Um, so, on to today's topic. Um, power of attorney. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yes. Power of attorney. It's a document that a lot of persons require or request that it be prepared. Now, what is a power of attorney? Mm -hmm. This is a document where someone, and you call them the principal, yes. give a close family member or a trusted person the authority to act on their behalf. And this is usually in their absence or sickness. So the person who is, who is given the, the power the principal, we also call him the grantor, must have it prepared in a specific format. Mm -hmm. And then after it is prepared, they sign it, mm -hmm. and it is witnessed by a justice of the peace. And to give effect to it, it is then taken to the tax office, or stamp office, where yes. it is stamped. Oh. Um, the fee currently is $500 for that stamp. And then to make sure will hold up in court that same document has to be taken to the Registrar General Department oh. where it is recorded. Okay. Now, the typical circumstances in which a power of attorney is usually requested, mm -hmm. like someone who is Jamaican and they are going to be going overseas for a period of time and they have certain businesses they want to have done. So, for example, you have a motor car that has been operated as a, as a taxi. You give your agent the power to license, to insure, and to get all requisite government documentation yes. to make sure that your vehicle can operate in your absence. Another example is where someone has property that they are renting. Yes. And they are unable to look about it. So you would get an agent, you would authorize them to find the tenants, to give notices, take the matters to court, and generally just to look after your house to ensure that it is your business is properly taken care of. Mm -hmm. And the last typical one is where you have a bank account in Jamaica and you know you will have bills to pay and so Instead of putting the person's name on the account, you prefer to give them a power of attorney where they can go to the bank and withdraw money, make deposits, make transfers, and things like that. Okay. So you will notice that because of the nature mm -hmm. of what is being done, Must be trusted. one of the first things you should do when you're given a power of attorney is to make sure the person is trustworthy. Yes. 
Because if you give your power of attorney to someone who has a criminal mind, they can literally mm-hmm. take you down the road or take you to the cleaners. Mm-hmm. Because they can rent your property and then they collect the rental. Mm-hmm. They don't repair your place. They don't pay the insurance. Yes. Um, things like that. Okay. And so the power of attorney must be in writing yes. at all times. It has the potential to save you money mm-hmm. because instead of you having to come and do yes. the business yourself, travel, you are able to appoint someone who is responsible, yes. number one, and trustworthy. Okay. So my recommendation would be, because of what is involved, if you have a trusted family member, let them be the first to be considered mm-hmm. to, to have your power of attorney. With, with this person that are able to, if you have a case, Yes. In Jamaica, and, and you can come, you can authorize a person to give a power of attorney to mm. sue on your behalf okay. and to go to court on your behalf. Those are the principal points. And before you ask your question, there's one thing I must say. The thing about a power of attorney, when the principal dies, the power of attorney dies with them. So the person can suddenly say, I'm in charge of the per- this person's estate. Yes, yes. Because I have a power of attorney. No. Yes. The law, as I stated previously, the Interstate Estate and Property Charges Act mm-hmm. sets out specifically yes. what is to happen to your estate in the event yeah, then. you did not make a will. Okay. The, the question I was asking is, this, the power of attorney, it is specific. So, so, for example, I own houses in Jamaica. I own cars in Jamaica. I, I own taxes. I'm giving you power of attorney over the taxes. Are the cars on the road? You have, that you have no power over my house as long as I don't put it on it. <laughs> an, an excellent question. I see you're paying attention. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so, so yes. When you're given a power of attorney, you have you can have a, what is called a specific power of attorney or a general power of attorney. No, you must decide what you want. Okay. So, if it's a specific power of attorney, let's say in relation to your cars. Yes. They can't use it and say, I'm in charge of your properties. So the authority of the person who is granted the power of attorney Mm -hmm. is restricted to what is contained in the power of attorney. Okay. And so for the avoidance of doubt, I usually make the power of attorney as specific as I can. Yes. So if it's a for a number of cars i put the engine number and the chassis number and the registration so you know which cars they are referring to so you could have a fleet of taxis mm-hmm. and you have your private car that your spouse or family member has access to yes so you have given him all sorts of well, six cars but my personal car that my spouse or child you have no authority over it okay okay you had said justice of the peace what if the person is living in america right and um they want to do have a, a power of attorney in America. Would, would that be valid in Jamaica? Yes. So, so what is usually recommended? So the person can reside in the states, have the power of attorney prepared. Okay. And in that case, it has to be executed in the presence of what we call a notary public. And so it is then taken to Jamaica, and the process that I mentioned initially mm-hmm. is gone through in that you pay the stamp duty at the tax office, mm-hmm. and then you have it registered. Okay. And the uh, uh, department. Yes. And the reverse applies. Yes. You could be living here in Jamaica, but you want to give someone power of attorney in the USA. USA. Yes. And so, in that case, it should be signed. Also, be signed by a notary public in the, Jamaica. There is nothing on the form for the person who is being given the power of attorney to sign, right? It's just the person who is given the authority. But just the person who is given the authority. The person who is the agent does not have to sign. Oh. Because this document is personal to the person who is given the power of attorney. Yes. And of course, the power of attorney can be for a limited purpose. Yes. And or it can be revoked at any time by the person who yes. grants it. Yes. So it's yeah. not, not an open-ended authority for you to do as you please, when you please. Yes, and yes. And you're going to say, I have your power of attorney, you can't do anything about it. No. Mm. I'm your principal, you're my agent, I tell you to stop. You stop. So it's, it's, it's just telling you to stop and you stop. It's not anything in writing. Well, it would be. And Papa, you're at your sharpest today. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I'm learning. I'm learning from the best, Sir Johnson. <laughs> of course. Yes. It's always recommended yes. that you put it in writing so that if, so for instance, if you had sent the proper attorney to the bank, yes. you the bank, yes. write to them. You understand? Oh. Because they might have a copy on record yes. and they use it to guide them. Write to them or write to persons of that nature so you can protect yourself and protect them. Okay, okay. We, we're talking about Jamaican overseas. Is it, can somebody in Jamaica, how about if the persons are in Jamaica, like somebody in Kingston, want to give somebody yeah. in Westmoreland power of attorney? It's, it, it's the same process? It, it, it's a, essentially the same procedure. Okay. Essentially the same procedure. There, there is a little nuance though between Jamaica and the USA because once you give a power of attorney in Jamaica, even if you get fall ill, the power of attorney continues in the USA if you fall ill it's there's tough. a presumption that the power of attorney is put on pause. Oh. So to get around that difficulty you can for the USA you then prepare what is called a durable yes. power of attorney. Yes. Where you express the state that in the event you're unable to do your business, um so you, you, you meet in a motor vehicle accident and you are in a coma for several days. Yes, yes. Having someone with a power of attorney in those circumstances yes. would be very be very handy because if it, if it is you have, let's say, premiums for your insurance policy to be paid, yes. the insurance company might not know and if the premiums are not paid for a certain time, your policy lapses or you might have loans to pay. So one of the things I advise persons sometimes is... Whilst you're healthy and everything is going well, you can just do a general power of attorney mm-hmm. and advise the person that this only comes into effect in the event they are unable to look about your own business. So it's a kind of safety net. Yes. A lot of persons don't do it, but in this day and age where you don't know what tomorrow to holds, be, yes, yes, yes. It, it's, it's a safety net you can put in place. It's not a must, mm-hmm. but it is something you can consider is it a paid position or it depends on the parties uh, it depends on the agreements of the parties no well you see a power of attorney mm-hmm. is not usually a paid position because when you start to pay them you get into the realm of contract and so you take it from being a power of attorney mm-hmm. into the realm of a contract where the person who you give the who you are paying off can actually sue you oh when you don't pay them. So you don't want to do that. Yes, yes, yes. And, and Papa, I for that question, I give you 100%. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning from the best, Mr. Johnson. I'll tell, tell you. <laughs> yeah, 100%. man. 100%. Yes, yes, yes. So, so, so yeah, your advice is don't, don't enter into a paid, into a, a contractual agreement. If you're giving somebody, no. yes, yes, yes. Just, yes. just, just, just indicate you wish for the for them to be able to do these things on your behalf. Okay. Of course, of course, if you wish, mm-hmm. um, you can give a stipend or, or, or a gratuity. Yes, yes. But it is not a contract. Contract, uh, which, yes. And, yes. Which, and which are, because if you, you don't want the other person suddenly to have a document they can enforce against you. Yes, yes. But that was never the intention. Well, Sir Johnson, we have covered a lot. But you know, I have, I don't know, as, as an aside, I've been reading the, the new um, Firearms Act. You, you, you get a chance to look at it? I, I, I have looked at portions of it. But I tell you, I, I, pl- I plan on doing some videos on it because it, it, covers, uh, it covers so much. You know, people need to know. It is completely new. Yes. And um, one of the points I wish to raise yes. um, is this. In the past, someone who's caught with a firearm and they plead guilty, the judge would have a discretion yes. to reduce the sentence. All that is gone now. That is gone. Yes. The minimum. 15. The minimum mandatory. It's 15. Is 15 years. Yes, yes. So, so even if you go in yes. and you plead guilty, 15 years. So <laughs> I have kind of extrapolated uh, Look down the road. Mm -hmm. And what I can foresee is the courts Mm -hmm. becoming clogged, the gun courts. Because what benefit is there to plead guilty Mm -hmm. when you are still guaranteed 15 years whether or not you go to trial? (laughs) Put put 
it this way. Yes. When what would usually happen, and and the bar associations usually take it up our private attorneys. The first person who is sentenced in accordance with the provisions of the New Farms Act can then take a, an take appeal. a challenge to the mm-hmm. Constitutional Court because you must remember, you know, mm-hmm. um, the general thought behind this is mm-hmm. not new. Yes. Because in the seventies, when the gun court mm-hmm. was first brought about the guaranteed sentence or the, the, the recommended the sentence then was mm-hmm. life imprisonment and mm-hmm. that was challenged yes. and came to the Privy Council and those aspects of the law that removed the discretion of the judge mm-hmm. were struck down by the Privy Council. Judges are very jealous about the discretion that they exercise. Yeah, because I'm expecting uh, there is a there's a sentence in guideline for the for the courts. I'm expecting that to be revamped or changed if, if this was it will have to be revamped. Yes. So uh, and, and, and because of this, what I, where where we really wanted to go, I just wanted to appeal mm-hmm. Versus. to the young men out yes, there. Yes man, left the gun them alone. Just, just just lay down the arms. Yes, man. Be- yes. Because you are twenty five mm-hmm. and you get caught to the firearm. You have your girl or your lady mm-hmm. and two youths and they're going to prison for 15 years by the time you're mm-hmm. out yeah. the love of your life would have forgotten you yes. and your children your children would have grown out of your sight yes yes, yes. Really worth it. because before you used to hear them say boy let me get well a three years may I get and come back them can't say that again they're gone for 15 oh. years if they have a three year old before they go to prison when they, when they, by the time they come back it's an adult that <laughs> yes, yes. And, 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 and and they would have lost out on the best years of their y- yes of, of, there you. of their child. Yes, 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 um, yes, yes. And and of course, whilst you are in custody or in prison, you won't be able to indulge. Yes. And I'm going to use a fancy phrase, you know, <laughs> physical congress with your spouse. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Leave the guns alone. It's it's it, it's not worth it. Not at all. Yes. Sir Johnson, thanks a lot, sir. Um, we'll be back next week, definitely. But yeah. thanks, thanks a lot. We have learned so much today, so much. You have any final, any parting shot? It was my pleasure. Yes, sir. And I look forward to continuing the series. And next week, I'll have so- we, will, we will have something. <laughs> yeah, man. Just as interesting. Yes, man, definitely. That we can, that we can share the knowledge. Yes, sir. With your subscribers and yes. viewers. Yes, All sir. Right. Yeah, respect, sir, Yeah, man. Blessings. Have a good day now. Bye, 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 bye.